So let me educate you. You're not powerful enough. These are the comments that I'm getting back from uh, sharing scripture with some people. The Bible says to go to your brother or sister if you see them stumbling or making a mistake. Go to them privately and talk to them. Let them know how these things are going. I'm doing this with these people. The ones that are claiming that they're using righteous judgment, yet they're making videos coming out against their brothers and sisters. That's not coming out to them privately and talking to them like the Bible says. But these are the responses that I'm getting back. Um, let me educate you on how it goes. Well, first of all, you're, what, 22? You're not going to educate me in anything. Um, go watch my videos. I have almost 800 videos covering all of this stuff in great depth and detail. Um, you're not powerful enough to to hit a nerve. I don't have to be, and I'm not trying to be, but God is. And he uses his scripture to talk to his people constantly. I've been convicted. I've been shown these things. The very first thing you must do before you can judge any other person, and this is, this is uh, shown in take the beam out of your own eye before you tell the brother about his speck in his. And, and I've had people tell me, I pulled the beam out of my eye. No, that's not what it looks like in your videos. You have to judge yourself with the scripture first and see where you are. Then you can go to your brother and say, hey, I found this. And that's what I do. do is there pride in anything that I share with people? There was probably at the beginning of the year, but I've since been, been convicted of that stuff. Do I try to do it because I'm trying to cast shade on somebody or throw hate at anybody? No. I'm sharing the scriptures that talk about these things. It's for the edification of the brothers and sisters and those who are walking down that dark road to the to the punishments that God said he has reserved for people that do that stuff, trying to save them from that and get them to turn back. I never put any hatred or anything like that in any of my comments. Or, it's, it's disappointing and it, it gets frustrating. But you know what? Share scripture, move on. And uh, the big thing, like I told both those people, I was like, you, you know, you guys really should put pride away from you uh, or you're going to suffer the punishments that he's talked about for people who go through these things. We all suffer from it. None of us is perfect. But you can squash that stuff down. You can get it under control, especially if you apply scripture to these situations. So I want to talk again about pride. I've done a video on this before, but we'll do it again. Uh, because these scriptures talk about these kinds of things. And we have to look inward. We have to look inward more than we look out at other people. I can go, you know, just drive from church to church on a Sunday and just sit in there and just write down the names of all the people I see that, oh, this one's got that wrong. Mm, this girl over here, look at she, that dress she's wearing. She's got that wrong. Showing too much ankle, too much calves. This one over here. They said, what? And they put it in a video? Oh, heretic. We don't have that right to judge like that. I've shared this and I just did a video on that. So in Proverbs 11, 2, it says, When pride comes, then comes disgrace. But with the humble is wisdom. If we have, if we have pride governing our responses and, and putting pride in the way, what we think we know, I know the Bible. No, you don't. I don't know the Bible. Nobody knows the Bible. They've been studying the scriptures for 2000, over 2,000 years. And there are still new revelations coming out of it now. Let's just take the last 2,000 years. They're just now coming up with new revelations that nobody's ever seen before. People that have dedicated their whole lives to this stuff haven't seen it. And we see that happening. You don't know the Bible. Nobody knows the Bible. Nobody. The Bible is just a shadow of what true knowledge is. The Bible is a hint or a taste of what's to come. <clears throat> you can't possibly know the whole Bible. So we, as soon as somebody says that, I'm, no, pride, your pride has gotten in the way. Let me educate you. Pride, that's your pride. You're not going to educate me on anything because the education and the knowledge and understanding doesn't come from you, it comes from God. But as soon as somebody says that, there's that anger, that hatred, that vitriol that is inside there. And they will take every scripture they can to justify everything that they're doing. Don't use scripture to justify you. Use scripture to convict yourself. Then when you've gotten yourself right, the beam is still sticking out of my eye. I'm still trying to pull it all the way out. Then you can go to somebody else and say, hey, um, 
what you're saying and doing is going against the scripture. Just pointing that out. This is the love of brothers and sisters in Christ. We come to each other privately and point these things out to them. And I've named a few names over the last eight months, but it wasn't to, to bring detriment out of them. It was to point some things out to, you know, as a watchman, you sound the alarm about false doctrines and false understandings and people that are throwing hatred. I don't do that anymore because I'm not worried about it. Here's this other guy right now. Now he can't come up with anything new. He's going to throw what I told him back at me. <laughs> don't care. I'm not worried about hurting feelings. Proverbs 16, 18 says, Pride goes before destruction and a haughty spirit before a fall. One's pride will bring him low, but he who is lowly in spirit will obtain honor. Proverbs 8, 13 says, The fear of the Lord is hatred of evil. Now, is that a hatred from our standpoint? No. You go look up what the, the Greek hate word for hatred is and then look at what it means. Pride and arrogance and the way of evil and perverted speech I hate. James 4, 6, but he gives more grace. Therefore, it says God opposes the proud, but gives grace to the humble. And if your eyes are open to see these things, you can see that and see who it's upon and who it's not upon. We're to be loving each other, not hating each other or coming against each other. But this is what people's whole, whole reason for living is, is to come against anyone that they don't agree with. Well, maybe you should study what they're putting out first before you come against them. Because heaven forbid, you might be wrong. I, I never tell you guys I'm right. I'm not right. There's certain things I won't be moved on because I've read the scriptures and I believe them. But... I'll never tell you I'm right. I always tell you, don't believe me. Go believe the word of God. Don't believe me. Don't believe any other person out there. And if somebody ever says, I'm right on that, the Bible is right on this. I'm not right. The Bible is. I let every man be wrong. Let Jesus be right. Proverbs 16, 5. Everyone who is arrogant in heart is an abomination to the Lord. Be assured he will not go unpunished what it says now you can deny those things about yourself but when you, you watch somebody's video and they are just lambasting somebody over one thing and they do a 20 30 40 minute video on this i saw a guy do an hour and a half video one time over one comment somebody made in, in a video that, on their channel then in the midst of that video watched it last night goes into their facebook page and starts looking at all the pictures oh look she's showing too much skin oh slut look at all that stuff she's wearing tight grip really that's what you found to get upset about don't worry about the message they were trying to put out that's what you're gonna do this is it's arrogance it's pride that's what causes people to do these things i'm better than this person because i don't ever wear shorts what you're not supposed to show that much skin what well you better put a hoodie on because you ugly this is ugly, and everything behind it is ugly. Everything on the inside is ugly. Craziness. And, but this is, the Bible said this was going to happen. That's why stuff like Proverbs 16.5 is in there. 1 John 2.16 says, For all that is in the world, the desires of the flesh and the desires of the eyes and pride and possessions is not from the Father, but is from the world. So when you learn to look for those little aspects in people's behaviors, and then you watch somebody's video and you see that stuff, um, a lot of times, and I'm not saying this is because I have, I've had some nice Bibles. Some people will buy the most expensive Bible they can. Pretty. And man, they take care of it. Man, I get the nastiest, oldest Bible I can. Especially from a used bookstore because it's got notes in there I can study. <coughs> I got an old Bible one time from, was it Charles Stanley? And some of y'all know who he is. And it was a little black Bible and it was in a used bookstore. And I opened it up and I was like, Charles Stanley? Are you serious? I started flipping through. Yeah, there's all kinds of notes in there. That's, that's awesome. If you're not willing to learn, what good are you to anyone? You have to be willing to admit you're wrong. We're all wrong. None of us get it 100% right. Let's just get that right out in the open. I've shared it before, but let's get it out in the open. None of us. If you're not willing to go prove an issue out, if you're not willing to say, you know what, I might not be right on this, let me go study it. And go study it. If somebody calls you out, I, I've told you guys before, 
uh, David Benjamin is on my channel now, and I told him, I said, hey, you see something I miss? Please call it out. Let me know about it so I can correct it. Some people called out when I was uh, going, I was uh, mistaken on Hebrew 6. I read through it. I looked at it a little closer, uh, prayed about it, and I was shown the truth, and I corrected myself. I don't want to put something out that's incorrect. My desire is not to do that. My desire is to put out something that's accurate. So if you guys see something that's incorrect, by all means, let me know about it. A lot of people have done it very hatefully, and they got shadow banned. I'm not going to get into arguments like that. That's, that's not where love is. Love is not hating on your brothers and sisters. Some people have actually said that that's, that applies to that. But it doesn't. The Bible is very clear about what you are to do and how you are to do, especially as it interacts, you interact with your brothers and sisters. 1 John 2.16, oh wait, I already read that one. Psalm 10.4 says, In the pride of his face, the wicked does not seek him. All his thoughts are, there is no God. There are people, come on. I don't know about you guys who have animals, but this little dog has been freaking out. And I don't know why, there's nothing wrong. Like I said, I got a, had a visitor last night. There are people that claim to be Christians walking around and, and some doing videos that deep down they don't believe there is a God. They'll share the Bible. They'll read it. They'll share it. They'll do all these things. But if you listen very closely to what they say, there's no actual faith in that person. They're a form of godliness, but the ends thereof are destruction. And they will tear a Christian up one side and down the other that believes and has faith. You're wrong. You're this. You're not obeying the law. Well, you aren't either. When is the last time you sacrificed an animal? Oh, that's right. Y'all say that, you know, that's not needed anymore. You're right. Jesus died for us. I, I have found some people that were saying, well, we can't, you know, God understands that we can't, you know, do that kind of stuff. Wrong. They just did it yesterday. They do it in other parts of the world. They've been doing it all this time. So you absolutely can fulfill that part of the law. But why would you? Jesus died for your sins. You, he nailed the law to the cross because he fulfilled it. There is no need to do that anymore. If you love me, keep my commandments. That was Jesus that said that. What commandments did he give? It wasn't the Ten Commandments. Covered this in a video. He gave two. And if you use those two commandments, you will fulfill the entire law by default. This is where the true faith and trust comes in. This is where the true love of Christ inside of you comes in. Because when you look at it for what it says, and I get, I get scriptures thrown at me daily, and they completely misunderstand them because they only use that scripture. They don't use all the scriptures. They don't search the matter out. The lack of understanding is just astounding. I've been there too. I remember I used to be exactly the same way. I still am. I'm still learning. Every day I'm learning something new. But to take that fact and to go hate on your brothers and sisters with it is completely against what God wants us to do for each other. Psalm 10.4 In the pride of his face, the wicked does not seek him. All his thoughts are there is no God. Proverbs 18.12 Before destruction, a man's heart is haughty, but humility comes before honor. Galatians 6, 3, for if anyone thinks he is something, when he is nothing, he deceives himself. Here's a hint to understanding that verse. We're all nothing. It is only because we are in Christ that we are anything. We're all nothing. We're flesh bags. Unrighteous, evil, full of sin. It is in Christ that we become something. Nothing we do, it is all what he does. Romans 12, 16, live in harmony with one another. Do not be haughty. You don't know what that word means? Look it up. Google what haughty meaning. But associate with the lowly. Never be wise in your own sight. People, people actually pick on me and make fun of me because uh, I hang out with anybody. I hang out with whoever, somebody that might need something. 
you know, I'm not too good. I know Christians that, well, now that I'm this, I, I don't, I don't go down there. I do. Because those are the people that need to be saved. Jesus came to save those sinners. Why wouldn't you go down there and share the gospel with them? Oh, but I could end up sinning. Well, then you better stay away if you're not strong enough. I go down there. I, I hang out with street people or whoever. I am not afraid to hug somebody that lives on the streets. I used to live on the streets. I know exactly how, how that feels. That's who Jesus came for. That's where Jesus is. He's down there saving those people. That's where we need to be. But as soon as people become a Christian, they'd like to get, whoa, 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 wait a minute. I can't go down there. No, oh, no. I, mm -mm. Never be wise in your own sight. And that's what we see. Proverbs 13, 10. By insolence comes nothing but strife. But with those who take advice as wisdom, you have to be willing to admit you're wrong and be willing to learn. Philippians 2, 3. Do nothing from rivalry or conceit, but in humility, count others more significant than yourselves. Proverbs 27, 2. Let another praise you and do not your own and uh, not your own mouth a stranger and not your own lips watching these people's videos they do the exactly the opposite of that galatians 6 4 but let each one test his own work and then his reason to boast will be in himself alone and not in his neighbor look inward everything you need to know about how you should walk don't worry about your brothers and sisters everything you need to know about how you should walk is in the bible Proverbs 26, 12 says, Do you see a man who is wise in his own eyes? There is more hope for a fool than for him. That says a lot. Because what does the Bible say about fools? <laughs> it doesn't speak very highly. Psalm 59, 12, For the sin of their mouths, the words of their lips, let them be trapped in their pride for the cursing and lies that they utter. 1 Peter 5.5 5 says, Likewise, you who are younger, be subject to the elders. Clothe yourselves, all of you, with humility toward one another. For God opposes the proud, but gives grace to the humble. Got a lot of new Christians now. Oh, yeah, I've read the whole Bible. Really? How many times? Once? Oh, no, twice? Oh, no, three times? Okay, well, when you get up to a dozen, talk to me. When you spend 20 years struggling and fighting and coming out of a sin world, Talk to me. When you dedicate all, most of your waking hours and some that you should be asleep to putting the truth of the scripture out there in detail as much as possible, come talk to me. Because a lot of those people that talk a lot of smack, I go to their channels and there's not a single bit of content on their channels. Why aren't you doing videos? Why aren't you sharing the truth you think you know? Some of them do, but most of them are scared because they don't want to be wrong. Okay. I, don't, I told you guys before, I don't care about being wrong. I'm not worried about being wrong. I'm just worried about getting the word out there. God will take care of the rest of that stuff. If I make a mistake, somebody will point it out. Proverbs 21.4 Haughty eyes and a proud heart, the lamp of the wicked, are sin. Obadiah, Obadiah 1.3 The pride of your heart has deceived you. You who live in the clefts of the rock... In your lofty dwelling, who say in your heart, who will bring me down to the ground? Who indeed? You know what? I'm going to do a, a, I think I'm going to do a video on Obadiah. That'll be the next video. Obadiah. You don't ever hear anybody quote Obadiah. Well, I love those little books that are obscure that nobody touches on. I'm going to do a video on it. So, I'm going to end with this. Luke 18, 9 through 14. He also told this parable to some who trusted in themselves that they were righteous. Whose righteousness are we supposed to have? Jesus' righteousness. Not ours. Ours is rags. And treated others with contempt. Hmm. Who could that be talking about? Two men went up to the temple to pray. One a Pharisee and the other a tax collector. The Pharisee standing by himself praying thus, God, I thank you that I'm not like the other man extortioners, unjust, adulterers, or even like this tax collector. Stupid thing was, he actually was like them, and worse. I fast twice a week. I give tithes of all that I get. 
But the tax collector, standing afar off, would not even lift up his eyes to heaven, but beat his breast, saying, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. The rest of that goes, he went home more justified than the other guy. He knew who he was, remembered where he came from, and knew who he was in God. And he acknowledged it. First Corinthians, uh, okay, let me do this. First Corinthians 13, 4, I'll end with this one, sorry. Love is patient and kind. Love does not envy or boast. It is not arrogant. And that is what we see in these other videos that people are just, all their energy, they're doing everything they can. Oh, this person is, ooh, Barry Scarborough, he's a false teacher. Tim Henderson's a false prophet. Well, neither one of them claim to be teachers or prophets, so how can they have that title? Ooh, Chelsea Bedell, she's she's this and she's that. Really? Because I've watched your videos and you do the same thing. Just pointing out little details. It's not my job to tell another person what they're doing wrong. It is my job to point out mistakes if they're detrimental to somebody. If it's a little mistake, who cares? Jesus will deal with that stuff. He takes care of those things. But as brothers and sisters, if we see a little mistake, hey, I uh, just want to point these scriptures out to you in reference to this thing that, thing that you had said. <coughs> Anytime any of y'all have ever shared scripture with me, I go and I apply it to what I'm teaching. Because I want to learn more. And I want to be better. And I want to make sure that what I'm sharing is truthful and goes according to God's will. I don't want to share something that's going to go contrary to that. Just like this video, doing this video. We're supposed to call these things out. Now, I didn't name any of those other people out. I talked about the other guys, but they're, they're all, we're all together. They're all grace preachers. But I I'm call this doctrine and this understanding and this, this type of activity out because it's wrong. That's what a watchman does. In fact, the one guy I'm about to respond to, he uh, said, this is what it means to be a watchman. It's like, yeah, that same scripture is on my about tab on my page. Go look it. I know exactly what a watchman is, and I'm doing what the watchman is supposed to do. The watchman is not is supposed to stand on the wall, and when he sees something bad coming, he calls it out. He sounds the alarm. The watchman doesn't stand on the wall and go, hey, you, that was wrong what you just said. You need to go. That's not what the watchman does. You're a false heretic teacher prophet. That's the new term, false heretic teacher prophet. And it's just, it's insulting, it's disappointing, and it's frustrating. But now... Thinking about that and seeing all the things that I see and seeing how small of a group we are. Now you go back to Revelation 5 and look at all the people that were standing in there and how, and even Daniel 7, and how the number was 10,000 times 10,000 with thousands and thousands ministering to God. To me, that's a very specific number of people that are going to get raptured and it's not that high. But... You go further, uh, was it uh, chapter 6 or 7 in Revelation, and it says, Who are these? Sir, you know, you know. These are the ones that came out of great tribulation. And they have palms in their hands. And they are innumerable. For no one can number them. What I see when I read that stuff, it tells me that the group of people that are going in the rapture are not that big. I'm not even including myself in that. I'm, I hope. I have hope. But the bigger group of people will be steadily flowing out of the tribulation. That To me, that indicates the biggest group of people, Christians, are going to have to go through the first half of the tribulation because they didn't get it before the tribulation. And they had to finish the work that God... Jesus had to finish the work he started in them that first half under trial and fire all the people out there that are saying oh no we got to go through the tribulation you're right some of y'all are going to have to go through it not everybody's going in the rapture because being a christian and trusting in christ and having faith in christ are two different things you can be a christian all you want to i can dress up for as a christian for halloween But that's just a costume. That's just on the outside. It's what's in here. That's what matters. That's what makes the difference. 
This is where the change has to happen. Not here. Not here in this flesh. Here. In your heart. So if you're one of those people, if I've been conversing with you and you came and happened to check out this video, read the scriptures about you, not about your brothers and sisters. The Bible is not a weapon intended to be used against other people. It's intended to be used against the enemy. Are your brothers and sisters your enemy? I had somebody one time tell me, well, if they're preaching a false doctrine, they are. No. What does the Bible say? They're still your brother and sister. They're not your enemy. We're supposed to help each other in understanding. We're supposed to bring each other along to come to a greater understanding and a closer relationship to Christ. I've been trying to do that on this channel. But it is what it is. Anyway, I love you guys. I bless you all in Jesus' name. I pray that you stay strong, endure the trials that are coming upon us. The, the, it's not going to be much longer and we're going to be out of here. But whatever comes your way, whatever stands in your path, if you have a channel and you're doing videos, whatever they say, don't take it to heart. Know where this is coming from and know what it is. And just walk in the glory of God. Keep your eyes on Jesus Christ and don't worry about it because he will take care of everything. This is putting your faith and trust in him. I'll see you guys in the next video.